Welcome to Maths Companion. Today we are going to learn the next section circle and quadrilateral. Let me take a circle and a quadrilateral. A quadrilateral like this is called a cyclic quadrilateral. So how can we define a cyclic quadrilateral? Look at the vertices of the quadrilateral. All the four vertices are on this circle. So we can define like this. If all the four vertices of a quadrilateral are on a circle, then it is a cyclic quadrilateral. Now look at the sides. AB is a side of the quadrilateral, but it is a chord of the circle. BC is another side, but it is a chord of the circle. CD is another side, it is also a chord of the circle. AD is the fourth side, it is also a chord of the circle. So we can define like this also. If all the four sides of a quadrilateral are chords of a circle, then it is a cyclic quadrilateral. Now is there any relation between the angles of this cyclic quadrilateral? Let us draw a diagonal AC like this. Then this is an arc and this is its alternate arc. Therefore angle B and angle D are angles on the alternate arcs. So they are supplementary or their sum is 180 degree. In the same way if we draw the second diagonal BD these are alternate arcs and angle A and angle C are angles on the alternate arcs. So they are supplementary or their sum is 180. That means the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary or the sum of the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral is always 180 degree. Now let us think of the converse. The opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. If the opposite angles of a quadrilateral are supplementary, then it is a cyclic quadrilateral. Is it true? Let us check. Let me take a quadrilateral and draw a circle passing through any three points of this quadrilateral. Suppose I take these three points. When I join these three points, I get a triangle. And we know how to draw the circumcircle of a triangle. That means we can draw circle passing through these three points. Let us observe. Let me draw a circle passing through these three points. Here the fourth vertex is on the circle. Now let me take another quadrilateral. Again, let me draw a circle passing through these three points. Here, the fourth vertex is outside the circle. Let me take another quadrilateral. Let me draw a circle passing through these three points. Here the fourth vertex is inside the circle. That means when we take three vertices of a quadrilateral and draw a circle passing through the three points, the fourth vertex can be on the circle, it can be outside the circle, it can be inside the circle. Let us take these situations. We know about this situation. The sum of the opposite angles are supplementary. So let me take this figure at first. Let me draw a quadrilateral and a circle passing through the three vertices. The fourth vertex is outside the circle. Let us give a name. Now join A to this point. Let it be E. A, B, C, E is a cyclic quadrilateral. All the four vertices are on this circle. Therefore angle B plus angle AEC equal to 180 degree. Now look at this triangle, triangle ADE. Angle AEC 
is the outer angle of this triangle. We know outer angle is equal to sum of the interior remote angles. Therefore, angle AEC equal to angle D plus angle DAE. When angle DAE is added to angle D, that is equal to angle AEC. That means angle AEC is more than angle D or angle D is less than angle AEC. We know angle B plus angle AEC equal to 180 degree. If we replace AEC by angle D which is less than angle AEC, the sum is less than 180 or we can say angle B plus angle D is less than 180 degree. That means if one vertex of a quadrilateral is outside the circle drawn through the other three vertices, then the sum of the angles at this vertex and the opposite vertex is less than 180 degree. Now let us take another quadrilateral and draw a circle passing through the three vertices of this quadrilateral. Here the fourth vertex is inside the circle. Let us give any. Now extend CD to meet the circle and join A to this point, let it be E. A, B, C, E is a cyclic quadrilateral. Therefore, opposite angles are supplementary. Therefore, angle B plus angle E equal to 180 degree. Now, look at triangle A, E, D. Angle A, D, C is the outer angle. Therefore, angle A, D, C equal to angle E plus angle E, A, D. That means angle A, D, C is more than angle E. Therefore, if we replace angle E by angle ADC, the sum is more than 180 degree. That means angle B plus angle ADC is more than 180 degree. That is, if one vertex of a quadrilateral is inside the circle drawn through the other three vertices, then the sum of the angles at this vertex and the opposite vertex is more than 180 degree. Combining together, we can say, if one vertex of a quadrilateral is outside the circle drawn through the other three vertices, then the sum of the angles at this vertex and the opposite vertex is less than 180 degree. If it is inside the circle, the sum is more than 180 degree. Now let us consider a quadrilateral ABCD in which angle B plus angle D equal to 180 degree. Let us draw a circle passing through the vertices A, B and C. Where is the fourth vertex D? If it is outside the circle, angle B plus angle D should be less than 180 degree. If it is inside the circle, angle B plus angle D should be more than 180 degree. But it is neither less than 180 degree nor more than 180 degree. It is equal to 180 degree. That means it cannot be outside the circle and it cannot be inside the circle. That means the fourth vertex cannot be outside the circle and it cannot be inside the circle. Therefore, it is on the circle. That means if the opposite angles of a quadrilateral are supplementary, then it is a cyclic quadrilateral. When one pair of opposite angles are supplementary, the other pair is also supplementary because sum of all the four angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degree. Therefore, we can say if one pair of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are supplementary, then it is a cyclic quadrilateral. This is a method to check whether a quadrilateral is cyclic or not. No need to draw the circle and check whether it is cyclic or not. It is not always possible. Just observe the opposite angles. Find their sum. If it is 180, it is a cyclic quadrilateral. Otherwise, it is not a cyclic quadrilateral. Now, let us do a problem. Prove that isosceles trapeziums are cyclic. What is meant by an isosceles trapezium? When one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are parallel, then it is called a trapezium. If the other pair of opposite sides are equal, 
then that trapezium is called an isosceles trapezium. That means in every isosceles trapezium, one pair of opposite sides are parallel, other pair of opposite sides are equal. Here we have to prove that isosceles trapeziums are cyclic. It is enough to prove the opposite angles are supplementary. So let us take an isosceles trapezium at first. Let ABCD be an isosceles trapezium. Then angle A and angle B are equal. Similarly, angle D and angle C are also equal. So we can say angle A equal to angle B. Now AB and CD are parallel lines and AD is a line which cut these parallel lines. Then these angles are co-interior angles, therefore they are supplementary. That is angle A plus angle D equal to 180 degree. Angle A and angle B are equal. So when I replace angle A by angle B, angle B plus angle D is also equal to 180 degree. That means one pair of opposite angles are supplementary. Therefore, ABCD is a cyclic quadrilateral or isosceles trapeziums are cyclic quadrilateral. Today, we have learned three points. The opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. If one vertex of a quadrilateral is outside the circle drawn through the other three vertices, then the sum of the angles at this vertex and the opposite vertex is less than 180 degree. If it is inside the circle, the sum is more than 180 degree. If the opposite angles of a quadrilateral are supplementary, then it is a cyclic quadrilateral. Now there is a homework. Calculate the angles of the quadrilateral in the picture and also the angles between the diagonals. In the next video, we shall discuss the remaining problems. Till then, bye.